Hi, I think people are just trickling in. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I hope everyone's doing super well. Um, we're going to get going in a second with the panel and the discussion, but before um, we get into the nitty gritty of everything, um, I just want to introduce Jess um, from Pathway Community and Nick's here as well. Um, and they're just going to tell you a little bit about everything that they do um, and why they do it and why we're all here today and set a bit of context for us. Um, and then we'll throw over to me, intro the panel and our amazing creative expert and we'll get going on everything. Hope that's okay for everybody. Um, Jess, do you want to do a little intro? Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here on this Sunday morning. I'm currently in Mexico, so it's a different time over here. <laughs> and uh, it's quite dark. But yeah, so um, uh, Path A is a growing community for people who are looking to nurture self awareness, freedom, self expression. And uh, we host a range of different experiences. So we have online meditation, breathing series, uh, podcast. And um, this online space is a series that we've been running for the past year, kind of kicked in when uh, the whole COVID thing happened. And then we had Jade on one of the panels last year for an event called Creativity Through Chaos. And uh, she had some really insightful things to say and together with our passion for creativity and the arts we decided to create a series called Creativity in the Future. So um, we're going to do a host of different series throughout the year and the first one now today is called um, Pathway Creates a Shape in the Future. So we've got a host of different people who I'm really excited about to be sharing their insights with us as well. Today. So much for being here with us, and um, unfortunately, Eddie from Fussy, the sustainable deodorant brand, isn't able to make it today. Um, but hopefully, we'll get him back on again in the future at some point. Um, and yeah, you know, today's full moon as well. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> it is Libra moon. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, we'll finish with Alex as well. This, um, so. We'll have a panel and then we're going to finish with this short creativity exercise. Um, but just before we begin, I'd like to just take a few moments to still this with everyone, if that's okay. Just be present. Check in with how we're feeling right now this morning. Remembering that we're here to listen with open ears, open minds, and an open heart. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll uh, take it over to you, Jade. Okay, over to me. Thank you so much for that, Jessica, and thank you so much for that um, moment of um, calm before we get into this conversation. So as Jessica said, um, you know, we've kind of come together to collaborate on this off the back of me being a part of a, a panel um, last year that Pathé put together um, kind of in relation to everything that was going on with COVID. Um, and this is also, you know, just like a super interesting topic for me. Um, and it's something that I've been thinking about over the last, over the last year. Um, you know, creativity, um, cultural production, um, the future, communities um, are all things that have been like very ever present on my mind. Um, and they've been so present on my mind that I actually started um, like a small studio called Studio Coles, which I founded back in 
um, like November of last year um, as a kind of like portal um, to explore like all of these kinds of ideas and more um, through client work, but also through um, other events like this um, ones that I do um, with other collaborators like with I Like Networking and through um, a podcast and other bits and pieces of content as well. Um, so in terms of today, our kind of like key topics is that we want to really think about, you know, creative people, makers, thinkers, doers, um, the mavericks um, that are shaping um, the things that we use, the spaces that we house and the communities that, that we're a part of. Um, what can, um, you know, a future, I kind of like, I'm loathed to use the term like new normal, but I know it's something that's on all of our, all of our minds. Um, you know, COVID is, has created, you know, one way or another, um, a huge moment of pause and a huge moment of reflection, um, as well as, um, yeah, being a time of kind of, you know, constant critical uprising, protest, um, and and just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff happening in the news, you know, all of the time. And what does that mean um, for how we want to live and our lifestyles um, as we kind of hopefully TBC um, exit COVID? Um, and yeah, and how creative ideas and how creative projects can ultimately create um, systemic and cultural change. So I'd love to like go over to the panel now and get everybody to um, do a little introduction to themselves. Just a little one minute intro would be perfect. Um, you know, so if you could tell everybody who you are, um, what you do and um, the question that I posed to these guys in the briefing document, I said, can you ponder the moment you realized creativity was important to you as an individual? I would love it if Nathan could give that um, a first stab for the group. Great. Thanks, Jade. So um, just to int briefly introduce myself, should I, should I introduce myself, Jade, as well? Or? Yeah, it's yeah, you, what you do, and the moment that, you know, you realised creativity was important to you as an individual. Okay, beautiful. So, um, yeah, my name is Nathan. I'm the founder of Love Jam Community, and I am a, a breathwork facilitator. Um, Love Jam Community is a sober and plant-based events organisation that specialises in... Uh, community experiences uh, all around self-expression and uh, creating a safe a safe space for um, yeah creative expression ultimately in an accepting space and um, we aim to revolutionize the way that we celebrate and educate so we create sober parties sober raves and we have a 100% sober festival um, which is our like keynote kind of thing it's called the love jam camp out we have about 500 people um, it's coming up in September, so I hope that you, you guys will join. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's a bit of an introduction to me. Um, I'm also yeah, a transformational breath facilitator, so I help, I help to, to create uh, workshops and classes, and um, we have a community building around healing, ultimately, and, and, and for well-being. Um, so, firstly, I would like, just like to say that the first real time I realised how important create, creativity was for me was when... I actually always kind of grew up thinking I wasn't very creative at all. I had that narrative in my mind, the that kind of limiting belief in my head around uh, not being imaginative and not having a creative medium and that I wasn't very good at that. Um, so then the shift happened for me when I realised that, that firstly, every single moment is an act of creation in that literally every single second is like an ever, ever unfolding mandala of creation. Um, so your life is a piece of artwork ultimately. And then the other breakthrough for me was when I realized that there's just pure value in the act of creation itself. It's not about what you're creating. It's not about the consequences or the outcome of what I'm drawing. It's just the fact that I'm drawing or cre creating music or something. It has intrinsic value into it. So that was a shift for me because then I didn't, care so much about what I was creating and I didn't judge myself I didn't judge others it was just there was a beauty in that in that act of creation and they kind of tie together in 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 us being conscious creators of our reality um so using our mind to create our, our reality as well so yeah that's a brief brief introduction for me. yeah I absolutely love that thank you so much Nathan it was beautiful Chris do you want to go next 
I can't hear you, Chris. Because I'm muted, because someone had to do that first, and it was me after all my headphone problems this morning. Fantastic stuff. Right, so I get for having two cups of coffee today. Um, hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I am uh, an architect by background. Uh, that's that's sort of the, the, the tradition, let's say, in which I was trained. Um, most of my work involves creating places for performance rather than of performance, uh, places where performances happen, places where culture is made, um, in practical terms, theatres, concert halls, but also temporary structures and temporary places. And I'm uh, very interested in um, how, in the relationship between culture and the places in which it is uh, enacted, in which it is developed, in which it changes. The fact that when we make a place, the values embedded in that place then affect us and the way that we exist within it and then that adjusts our culture so every and to speak slightly to what nathan was saying every time we make a decision about the way that we make our city our lives our homes every little choice has a cascade effect it can have a ripple outwards um, an exponential change to our uh to our lives and and um one little uh you know if you the right decisions at the right time or the uh the right open-minded choices can ripple outwards and um, have great uh, positive effects. And for me um, personally, I mean, it was a really interesting question as I, I was struggling to think about it. And I, I came back to a moment when I was probably about five or six and I, um, I had a habit of, I liked Lego. Everyone who becomes an architect says they like Lego, but I, I, f I often find that a lot, if I do encounter toys I had as a kid, they're often really destroyed with like paint or um, like permanent markers, or there's a particular moment when I was thinking of this question, when I remembered that I'd found some kind of like bright silver paint, which I think was some kind of construction material. I can't remember what it was for, about five or six, got my hands into it, went to the back of my brother's blue Ford Cortina estate, he was a lot older than me, and went like that. <laughs> and right on the back, and I clearly, as a five or six year old, thought this was fantastic, this was individual, this was, this was a, an act of creativity. He was less impressed. Um, and I think as I look back at when you asked the question, there's probably a cascade out, not from that moment, I'm not going to say it was childhood trauma, but uh, <laughs> there's a cascade because it was a great moment, but there is a cascade outward from little moments like that of realising I wanted to see things slightly differently, wanted to question why things were the way they were, and maybe have a go at making them different, hopefully not too permanently, like the back of that car. Um, so that's the kind of way it started. Oh my god, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. It's it's amazing the moments that you that that stick with you like throughout your throughout your life. I'm actually thinking I might I might need to um after I remembered that the other day I need to give my brother a call and kind of maybe apologise for that as an adult. <laughs> I don't know. He loved that car. He loved that old car. Exactly. I'm sure he talks about it in therapy all the time. When is Chris gonna apologise for that for that moment? That honestly, I could have saved him thousands. <laughs> amazing, Joanna. Do you want to go next? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hey guys, so sorry, first of all, tiny disclaimer, I do have a very dramatic cat who's just being very extra today, so you might hear him wailing in the background, um, but um, yeah, enough about the cat. Um, I'm another lapsed architect like Chris. Um, I think a, a lot of architects kind of realize and meander uh, along the way uh, from their original sort of background. Um, how I would describe myself now is more of an emotional engineer. Um, so I use kind of this multidisciplinary, um, multi-sensory approach to designing a space um, and probably combine a little bit of that with my God complex, trying to direct or uh, kind of imagine the uh, decision-making process, the emotions, the memories that people will have as they pass through that particular space. Um, I kind of always think of this Shumi quote, uh, Shumi was like an architect who was pretty seminal in like the 80s, uh, who was saying, an architect who designs a window is responsible for the person who throws themselves out of that window. That's obviously a very extreme kind of way of thinking about it, but that's essentially what I, what I try to do. So currently I work with uh, your studio um, and I work uh, with advising brands about designing their space strategies, let's say, um, uh, of how to emotionally engage with uh, their, their guests and consumers. Um, so hopefully that's uh, <laughs> a sort of clear, uh, clear kind of um, overview of what I do. Um, it was really hard to think of like the moment that, you know, like it kind of 
creativity defining moment for me. But actually, um, probably around the same age um, as Chris was saying, so I was six or seven, um, I was uh, by the sea with, with my parents um, and I had a, an accident. My hand was crushed uh, by this really metal, heavy metal door. Um, and before that, like, I'm not a very sporty kid. I, I'm not, you know, um, so my kind of pastime and my identity, as, even as a little kid, was defined by like doing little craft things and drawing and stuff. And all of a sudden for about two months, I couldn't do that. My hand was in a cast, like it was, uh, so it was that kind of weird shift in thinking about how do I spend my time beyond just like the mechanics of drawing? Like, how do I, what does kind of creativity mean for me? Obviously I, I didn't put it like that, but it was kind of um, this kind of, uh, and it really kind of challenged my perception about me and who I felt I was. I was no longer the person who was just always drawing when everyone else was like playing football. Um, but yeah, I think it was really interesting because it, um, it transformed me more into a thinker rather than a maker, uh, which is definitely how I would define myself now as well. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of my moment of uh, realization. <laughs> so interesting. So it's almost kind of like this um, incident of like limitation, like creating mm -hmm. this like new framework and like a superhero. You <laughs> moved your power. Yeah, origin it. story. <laughs> <laughs> what a great origin story. And then she had a spider, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera and all of that stuff. Alex, I know um, in essence you're here to do the creative task at the end, but I feel like in for a penny, in for a pound, if you're at the event, you should just be in the panel. <laughs> so it'd be great if you could introduce yourself as well um, yeah. and um, a little bit about what you do. And you know, if you do have, um, I know this question's kind of been thrown at you, but if you do have a little um, moment um, that you remember um, about your creative past and if you'd like to share it that would be amazing. Yeah for sure so Alex hey um, I am currently in Melbourne Australia hence the accent and the night time and I can see that full moon actually right behind me as well that we were talking about. Before. Um, so I am predominantly a photographer and um, I also am a yoga teacher and a brand manager. And I run this online platform called Creative Space. And that's kind of like my passion project. So it's a space where I help people connect to their inherent creativity. And I just feel really called cool to share with as many people as I can, really accessible exercises to help them feel creative because I just think it's in everyone. So that's a little bit about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And in terms of, yeah, that moment when I'm like, creativity is for me. I think the first thing that popped into my mind was when I moved back to Australia and I was like thrown into this corporate dry job. And I'd never been in that environment before and my whole life had been quite, you know, fun and like lively and colourful. And then I was thrown in this dull environment and I was like, oh my gosh, there's something missing. What is it? And then, yeah, it was definitely like, right, I need to make a conscious effort to like pick my camera back up, take a course in ceramics because it's not what I'm doing every day. So yeah, it's probably the moment when I realized how much I need that like creative spark in my day to day to just like keep me alive, keep my soul happy. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> just thank you to keep your soul happy and I completely agree with you in terms of that whole um kind of creativity being um within um everybody um scenario and also you know creativity um you know as kind of Ioana's um explanation sort of indicates creativity like through thinking as well as doing you know what you do with your hands what you do with your brain how you collaborate with other creative people to make other great creative stuff um are all like super important um I guess like question wise I'd love to kick off with um thinking again um about like problems and solutions and like chris like i wondered if you could talk a little bit about how like your practice um like solves problems you know because i know that you design and um, like you say you've designed like spaces for performance but i know that you look at your practice in a sort of 
yeah interesting alternative way so it'd be interesting if you could talk a little bit about that and maybe about um the influence of community on like your practice and the work that you do okay sure um i mean i think the the key thing from what you just said that a key difference for me is is generally to think in terms of designing systems not objects um in that i feel i mean i think i, I view this within my creative training my architecture I mean, yeah, my, my lapsed architecture training and uh, and what i thought i was getting myself into but also the world i was living in as a child um, I, the world where regular people are referred to as consumers uh, you know when you read in the papers that consumers are doing this and actually are we consumers are we is that a way that we choose to define ourselves or is that a way that anything should be I mean that you know something defined as a consumer is not a uh, that's that's not a productive part of a system really uh, that's not a role within a, a functioning system and I think um, yeah I mean I like the way you described what I, I mean I'm always interested in hearing uh, when you and I have chatted Jade how what I say bounces back because it's very good for my own process because I'm very interested in this perspective of um, everything we're doing is we we are currently on a planet we are currently within a uh, wider planetary system. We are currently, everything that we are in, everything, there is no throwing away. There is no uh, away. I mean, everything everything ends up landing on the same planet and goes back into the same cycles and circles. And um, I mean, this can be a little bit intense when I'm approaching a client, if I start talking about this stuff. Uh, but hopefully the clients that want to talk about this stuff, even if we are um, just looking at, you know, a temporary structure for those things we used to call festivals um, and uh, or um, for a more permanent intervention into a city if you're having that perspective that everything you're doing is, is coming from somewhere and going somewhere else and all ultimately feeding back into the uh, back into the system I'm uh, you know I um, yeah that's I guess my my holistic approach to projects my holistic approach to things which I might be asked to do by a you know an organization, an in institution. Um, so I can't even remember if I'm answering your question. I just, uh, uh, yeah, that was, I get, I get, I got caught into my own uh, area of interest there. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, and I love it, and I love that, and I love that you do that, Chris. I love like how, um, how you, how you do it. <laughs> into this amazing conceptual space. I'd love to like throw this question on to you, Anna, because obviously you know. Um, like problem solving, obviously a lot of the work that you do is so client facing and problem solving is such an important part of like anything that's kind of led by that creative strategy. And if you um, are calling yourself an emotional engineer, like I find that absolutely fascinating because it instantly makes me think of kind of systems and frameworks and processes. Um, so yeah, would you like to talk a little bit about how you solve problems when you're faced with something from a client, a creative problem? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's it's interesting because um, a lot of um, what I do is also based on things that aren't, let's say, uh, creative focus. I was looking at other people uh, and other fields specifically. Um, so I'll give a, a short example at first as how to, uh, how I would approach a, a problem like this. So um, I was designing this uh, this clinic um, for a procedure. Uh, I can't give a lot of details because it's a project like that's in progress, but people go there for specific procedure, uh, procedures. Um, and the client's main issue was kind of anxiety and how do you alleviate um, anxiety of people who go in for this medical procedure um, uh, through through the space. So I was looking um, I was, uh, through this kind of uh, paper by this uh, neuroscientist who was specifically looking at fidgeting. Um, and I'm a bit of a fidgeter. Um, I I doodle, I fidget, I tore, tear, tear little bits apart of paper and stuff. Um, uh, so I was kind of thinking of how would you um, solve this kind of anxiety that people feel naturally because they're going there for that purpose through designing that space. So kind of embedding um, almost a spatial fidgeting devices um, to kind of 
take the anxiety of people going through it. So um, I spoke to uh, uh, the neuroscientist who did uh, that particular paper into fidgeting and doodling and then embedding that into the design. So um, a short answer would be uh, by looking outwards, especially with architecture, it's a lot of navel gazing and kind of talking about, um, you know, the, the design of it, but ultimately it's looking outwards at all these other disciplines and fields um, and stealing as much as you can from them um, in order to, to solve a, a pro problem creative, uh, creatively. Because creativity is taking one thing and then a completely unrelated other thing to get like the third sort of entity. That's where the creative spark comes through. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my, my simple rule is, uh, take one thing from one field, another from another field, and uh, uncombine them in an ex unexpected way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you probably shouldn't facial be, okay, doodling. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of like your TM, essentially. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a great, like, it's a great creative um, equation, because it's also, you know, that kind of, um, like, point of tension is where, like, a moment of, like, surprise can happen or, you know, a moment of, like, deeper learning and mm. um, all of that fantastic stuff. Um, Nathan, I would love to, like, think about this, like, through the lens of what you do, because, you know, obviously, Chris and Joanna are very much working in the kind of, like, creative, spatial, architectural, like, design space, but, like, what you've created um, sits more, um, you know, in the realm of community and, like, what you're doing is, is creating a movement and, facilitating um i guess a new kind of like lifestyle choice so i'd love to like hear from you like how you designed that how you design like your festival and the um experiences that you do for your specific community mm. great so um well firstly it, it all started with with my the change within myself so um once i began to love myself more then I, it meant that I didn't need to have things like alcohol to go to those more playful places and connect with people. So um, as a result of that, then I then, my intention is to create spaces where people can connect um, and uh, in a very, uh, in a very pure way, ultimately. So kind of what, what, what will, what I'll do is, is make sure we have lots of different ways of interacting with each other in, um, you know, ice breaking ways, you know, things that, that, that maybe people pushing people out of their comfort zones, really. Uh, like I want to always push people out of their comfort zones because that's where where the growth happens. Um, so I'm very I'm very mindful of that. Um, and then in terms of the way that we. Uh, create the, the the festival and the uh, the sober parties as well is I will always uh, create the, make sure that I'm, I'm intentionally creating this container of acceptance so in that place where um, you know you're gonna you're not gonna be judged or you know creating this container where we're inviting people to to be more accepting of each other uh, and ultimately more loving, then that gives people permission to be themselves and be their authentic self and be their vulnerable self and be their authentic create creator. And then that give gives other people permission to be their authentic creators as well. So, um, yeah, I will always do my best to invite people into that space and create that, that safe container. Yeah, no, I love that. And I love what you're saying about um, like pushing people outside of their comfort zone. What does that, what does that look like to you? pushing people outside of their comfort zone. Mm. Yeah, so for, I guess for me it's 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 being vulnerable in your in your in your true self, in your authentic in your authentic self. Um, I guess for me in my journey and it comes back to the self-love aspect is is there were parts of myself that I didn't accept fully about my about fully accept fully. Um, and I would often hide those parts of myself but that's an act of like self-depreciation and it's and it's 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 being stuck in the person that you know doesn't serve you so you have a choice it's like okay am I going to be vulnerable and step out of my comfort zone and feel that self-pride and when you feel that self-pride that's an act of self-love and you connect with people on a more heart 
heart vulnerable connection and people often will share their wisdom with you so and then you're like, oh, okay it's not just me okay cool we're relating on this we're connecting on in this way um so then yeah i guess for me it's it, it, it's a process of acceptance uh authentic expression into your vulnerability and that is an act of self-love which can take you to a much more expanded place within yourself and also i would say it's a choice to stay open because it's so you know like often we'll we'll shut down um like you, you feel this closing of your heart right you really it's a very you know it's like like it's not a very expansive energy right but if you choose to step out and just be like okay no i'm just going to stay open like try like that intentional like that intention to stay open in that space um i think c can really open up for a, a future that is extremely like much more more loving and more aligned with who who you are yeah no i love no i love that and i love the i love the physicality of that as well so that's kind of like your equation um as well into the into that into that space joanna what are your what are your thoughts on like using experiences and experiential to push people outside of their comfort zone do you think that's an important part like of the of the process like whether you're working for a brand or something that's kind of like more culturally focused um, I think the comfort zone in general and comfort is such a, like a, you know, like such a trading tool right now. It's such a, you know, we're, we're living in the age of comfort really, um, and convenience, um, uh, you know, uh, and that kind of is the ultimate luxury right now. Right. Um, so kind of challenging that in a, a little bit is, is always good, you know, having that kind of moment of, um, of risk that people take that when they engage with a space or an experience is really important because that's what generates memories uh, because it's a, a point of differentiation from their uh, from their everyday is that kind of like jumping through the the looking glass uh, or something so it's it's kind of that moment of um, uh, that generates uh, really strong sort of emotional responses and memories for them. So yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, hugely important, especially in a landscape where everything is tailored for our comfort and our kind of, um, let's say, wellness, which has become a little bit of an encompassing kind of, um, uh, you know, safe word in a way. So maybe sometimes it's good to kind of challenge that and, uh, and, and push it. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd say it's hugely um important to to push uh people out and and, and uh, outside of their comfort zone yeah and i'm thinking a little bit about like pushing people outside of their comfort zone and kind of like larger like social and political like change and movements as as, as well because you know in order for um you know people to change their um views opinions you know lifestyles you know that curve takes a really long time and is normally you know led through lots of different projects you know projects and advertising and marketing and you know lots of people doing lots and lots of research into you know what we buy and why we're buying it and the psychology behind all of the things that we do um so i want to move into thinking about like how creativity and creative thinking um can start to challenge those like bigger like macro ideas um chris do you have any thoughts on that or like projects yeah that kind of how creativity can um you know support with our you know big kind of like social and political like challenges of now i know that's a huge question to land on you <laughs> it is i'll try well, and I'm, <laughs> yeah i mean one of the i was talking to someone just the other day and um she quoted at me and she's we were trying to remember who couldn't it's one of those things where you find a quote or a particular line particular line of thinking you can't necessarily remember who it was from and then it's you know but you know it's a good one, which is the, the idea that, and unfortunately I, I'm now going to seem like I'm always talking about this, back to the idea of the scale of systems. It's that it's hard to see, it's often hard to understand a system from within it. Uh, it's, a, it's particularly hard to understand if you're only viewing it from one perspective. So when sort of talking about these social and economic inequalities, these things that we, in our lifetimes, we've all been raised within a particular pos position, within certain assumptions it's a creative act a bit like as nathan was saying about every moment is a motion of create moment of creation there is a creative act to just being able to imagine the world being at all different 
Yeah. So when you when you're sort of saying what role does creativity have in this? Fundamentally, the only way we can. Um, uh, who was it? It was. Uh, it's Lucille Clifton, the American poet. So we cannot create what we cannot what we can't imagine. The act of imagining something new is what leads us to the future we might want. If we can't, you know, and the act of one person imagining it new, putting it out there, uh, making it visible, thinking in public, standing up for what they believe in is what allows other people to see something else as being different. And if we don't, um, if we don't, yeah, essentially it's what role does creativity have? It's all we've got. Otherwise, all we end up doing is that we we're we're just clicking and following uh, the, uh, the the AI, uh, the, and you know AI isn't AI; it's just machine learning. It's just repeating. You liked this before. Will you like it again? And we can get some money out of you if you do. Right? It's extractive. Uh, and fundamentally, if we're looking to try and make our future regenerative, which it has to be because we're damaging everything that we're in 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 right now, we have to. <sighs> do what we can as humans, which is to think a little bit differently, even just a little bit at a time. So fundamentally, yeah, what can we, what can it do? It's all we have. So basically kind of what you're describing is the echo chamber, the, like that convenient, that kind of comfort and convenience that we were talking about and that age of comfort and convenience that we're in kind of, you know, tagged on to um, all of the kind of new technology that we now also kind of like sit within an art, you know, echo chamber um is yeah is is yeah that's extractive yeah it's yeah it's it's just it's just it's distracting and but, no but it, it's, it's distracting but it's also extractive i mean it's it's the idea of comfort i mean joanna uh, said it really beautifully about this sort of relationship we now have with comfort but we are, are our lives that much more comfortable they're certainly more convenient and that much easier but they but the reason why we need comfort is because we are being damaged the reason why we need comfort is because uh, the system that we have uh, created in the last couple of hundred years is uh, is not natural for us and getting back into harmony with what surrounds us and uh, doing so, you know, in within the, you know, step by step, blah, blah, blah. That's the that's the. Yeah, like this, this we're, we're being, our comfort is being sold. Our comfort has been taken away from us. We gave it away and now it's being sold back to us. Mm, in little commodified chunks. Nathan, do you mm. have any thoughts on this? Because this feels kind of very relative to everything that you're doing as well. I do, yeah. So um, one of the things that came through for me was the power of music um, for change. Like music is a form of activism in my eyes. That uh, you can look at people like like Nina Simone and the impact that that her music had on on shifting uh, perspectives, right? And and ultimately, what motivates people to take action is either inspiration or desperation. And I think music can be very inspiring for people. And and for me, music is about the way it makes me feel. It's it's about it, it, it sparks an emotion within me, right? So I think music can be a very powerful tool for inspiring people to make emotional uh, change as a result of the emotional things that come up within them. Um, I mean, one example for, for that is, is that, that came up for me was um, actually, uh, maybe some of you have heard of a, a rapper called Loki, uh, a political rapper, a British rapper. He was uh, demonized by the British press for being a terrorist. Um, when actually he wasn't, but I actually grew up in a, uh, I went to a, a secondary school that was a Jewish secondary school. And he was talking about uh, Palestine and, and, you know, and it was actually, he brought into my, into my zeitgeist and my perspective, a different perspective that changed the way that I perceived the Israel Palestine situations. So it, it affected me in, in a way that music affected me in a way, and maybe I wouldn't have come across that in that way if it wasn't for that and then the other thing i wanted to say was um love jam is like you know it's a bit of a hippie event <laughs> you know it's it's like people are coming there's we're doing meditation sound baths um it's you know it's vegan it's it's alcohol free it's a bit of a hippie event right so you know a lot of people just aren't going to come to that right a lot of people just won't come to that because they'll be shitting themselves they're just not going to come to something like that and you know maybe it's from a place of insecurity maybe it's from a place of judgment but they're probably not going to come however what people will come to is somewhere where it is about the music so for instance the sober events that we do 
are about the music because music brings everybody together. It's a language that we all speak. So like I have a vision of selling out the O2 Academy as a sober event and, and, and using that as a way to expand the community. And again, just creating this very safe, beautiful container of love and acceptance and not feed it, force feeding anybody stuff down their throat about spiritualism, but just creating a safe space, bringing and, and allowing the music to be a medium to bring people together, to open their minds to a different, perspective basically if that makes sense yeah that absolutely does make sense yeah using music as kind of like the um the leveler to bring people into like an, a space where they can explore like lots of areas of like wellness and spirituality or you know eating different things or whatever and i think veganism is such a like interesting example to cite because it's like you know 15 years ago like if you went to a restaurant and somebody like ordered a vegan meal like everybody would have some kind of like crisis <laughs> you know and over time like veganism was sort of like absorbed into like lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different subcultures until you know it kind of where it is now and there's like you know and there's vegan prep and all, and all of that stuff so now yeah. it's like you know ve veganism like music you know i think veganism has become like the leveler like through which like other um creative ideas movements um you know lifestyle choices are like now being explored i guess mm -hmm. food and drink you know being another you know being you know so at the core of like everything that we are as humans like as well as being creative that kind of makes total sense um alex i was just thinking about you and like your new business obviously embedding um like creativity like into the everyday and teaching people like creative tools that they can use in the everyday um and i was just thinking about that kind of juxtaposition opposed with um chris's great comment about like imagination and how we like need to always foster you know our um ability to imagine something else question something else um so can you talk a little bit about some of the creative tools that you use or that you teach to explore um like different yeah. ideas yeah completely i think for me there's just such a beauty and use in like connecting to your playfulness which you know you can kind of tap into through connecting to your inner child like that playful nature but it's in everyone so like that is the biggest tool that I use to like really incite that creativity mm. and that can be done I mean we'll do it in a bit but um that can be done even just by you know choosing a word and then just like writing from that and then like trying to create a story because I feel like storytelling and the act of actually like writing a story is only something that unless you pursued like creative writing at uni um, is only something that you did as a kid. And then from there, you can create some really amazing poetry and it's kind of like that spoken um, performative like stuff that you can get into, which can get really fun too. So I feel there's that. And then also um, a big part of what I do is movement inspired. So, I mean, I'm a yoga teacher, but you know, you can kind of add on embodiment practices through that too. So everything from dance, you know, and that's that connection to music once again. Um, and just really like allowing yourself to feel things through your body and for that to be a tool of expression, which is really cool. And when you work with people, when you're working with your clients or, or your community and you're hosting these sessions and um, trying to, I guess, reactivate like people's playful nature, um, like what are the kinds of things that you that you see? Like are people um you know are people scared do they kind of get it straight away are they like you know do people really easily move into that headspace or can it be quite uncomfortable because i think the things with creativity is that it's like this thing that everybody does have like for sure it's like an anchor um that's there but it's also kind of like pedestaled and heroed, right? Like we learn creativity, everybody who's on the panel has spent years and years and years honing like their creative like craft. So it can also be kind of hugely intimidating to um, use these tools and think in this way. Yeah, absolutely. So there's this um, underlying philosophy that I really have ingrained in myself, which helps me. And that is like, I see you in your wholeness. So even if, you know, someone is struggling to get out of their own head and move with their body or to create a story, that is 
that's them and that's them being whole and that's like their uniqueness in this time and that's fine so then I just encourage them to sit with that and say if we're doing like a story writing exercise I really encourage people to like write on that so what's coming up for you what are you feeling and then like slowly but surely all of the layers start to peel away and then before you know it you sort of get into this flow state which is yeah kind of how I've done it so I think like instead of like honoring what's coming up in anyone is just so key and that's you know in movement if you don't want to move just like maybe move just one finger um or focus on your breath or whatever it is I just think that yeah sort of honoring where you're at is where to start yeah yeah and also like honoring if you do, if something does feel uncomfortable because you know again and I know and I know this conversation isn't isn't about comfort but it keeps, it keeps coming up um in in various different places and it's like it's important to realize when you feel uncomfortable and to own that feeling like it's totally natural to not feel comfortable it's totally natural for something to not be convenient it's totally natural for something to not go exactly the way that you thought it would in your head <laughs> or realized in real life like all of those things are um are absolutely fine and i'm sure you all find that across like your critical practice um we're coming up to like the last few um like moments of this part of the session um before alex kind of takes over and does her workshop which i'm super super excited about um so i guess i just wanted to like end um on like one question um like for you all um if you could like grant like one wish for the future like what would it be and why i'll let you start nathan oh, <laughs> dropping bombs yeah. um one wish for the future and what would it be hmm Mm, yeah, I think it would be that we we step out of the veils of separation into a place of more where we re we see our interconnectivity more clearly to the point where people are no, no longer greedy because I think that greed is really what has and the se the set the separation of unity into the ego is what is really causing a lot of these issues in society and the destruction of our planet and this extraction method that we're in so yeah i would say seeing our internet internet in, in connectivity and um yeah seeing ourselves more more together as a, as a result yeah yeah chris how about you i'm gonna go for a variation on the same theme uh do you know the pale blue dot photograph uh, that mentioned uh, quite often by Carl Sagan. It's the time when they first persuaded the Voyager space, uh, the NASA to turn around the Voyager spacecraft and look back at our solar system. And the, the, the digital photos of the time from this 1970s technology were so low, low quality. It's just a little pale blue dot in what looks like a sunbeam coming across this old photo. Very famous, low quality old photo. And he wrote beautifully about it. And it's basically about um, the realization that everything that we know about our history is all taking place on that one little dot floating like a moat in a sunbeam and it's just another perspective on what nathan was saying it's the real it's the realization that no matter how much uh, we're all you know we as humans that we naturally look at anything over about 120 people is nat we naturally it's unnatural for us to view them as anything as other than other it's the dunbar number it's that's how big our communities were in ancient times and but the realization that at this point everything that we do to our planet is on such a scale that we're screwing it for all of us and so that the, the idea that we're all on this together um and so my hope would be if we can have that realization whatever and i hope it's a relatively positive thing that really gets us to see that i hope we can see that not too late and still find our joy still have good lives and enjoyable fun lives with great parties but to do so in a way that isn't screwing somewhere else on the same planet yeah amazing Joanna, how about you 
Um, I mean, you guys put it so, so beautifully. So, um, so deeply. It's, it, you know, you're talking about this pale blue dot and it's almost this continuous chain of creativity that got us here, you know, from the first person who, uh, you know, the first uh, cave, caveman person who put their hand on, uh, on, a, on a wall up to where we are now, where we're developing um, what is still very incipient and kind of superficial AI and stuff. It's this continuous chain of creativity and passing on knowledge and collaborating between fields. Creativity sometimes is defined as so narrowly, at least in, um, let's say, uh, I know one of your questions was about the government, kind of like, what is creativity? Um, what are creative jobs in a government perspective? But, you know, what uh, creativity is not just within the creative fields. It's, it's this collaboration and it's this continuous chain of um, knowledge exchange and taking the path of most resistance um, that's where new ideas and new challenges come from. Um, uh, and we're in this such, uh, this exciting age of kind of, um, I try to talk about it as this new renaissance. You know, it, we have so many tools at our disposal of communicating, of searching, of looking into other fields. Um, renaissance was kind of, uh, you know, is known for people not being, uh, you know, experts in something, but in love with all sorts of uh, different fields. And I'd love for all of us to embrace that um, again and kind of become these uh, curious uh, sort of flaneurs and creatives uh, across different fields to generate new ideas for the future. Um, so yeah, that's my, my wish is uh, embrace the new renaissance. I love that. And embrace curiosity, it's so important. I think it's such a power. I think it's just such a like powerful trait that like sits within everything um, that's been uh, mentioned by all of you. Whether that's like the curiosity to, um, you know, join you know Nathan's festival and to, you know throw yourself outside of your comfort zone in his in inverted commas sort of like hippie um, experiences, um, kind of like right through to questioning things, right through to imagination, right through um, to questioning your um, levels of comfort um, in order to kind of you know, deep to do deep learning. And I think, you know, it's really lovely to hear um, the kind of like parallels between um, kind of um, what you, Yuana and Chris kind of like talk about um, in this kind of, yeah, sort of grand um, kind of like cultural context and kind of like Alex and Nathan um, really talking about that kind of like heart, mind, um, like body stuff. I think that's been a really like beautiful um, kind of collaboration to see um, like throughout this panel. So like, thank you so much, um, all of you for everything. Um, if anybody's got any questions, like feel free to like pop them in the chat um, and we'll get them answered for you at the end. But otherwise I think we'll conclude um, the kind of panel part of this session. Jess, I'll throw back over to you. And then Alex, yeah, we'll have our lovely final few moments um, embracing hopefully some of these ideas. Thank you so much. Um, you and Chris Nathan, this has been fantastic. I've absolutely loved it. Yes. Likewise. So Thank you, guys. Great way to start a Sunday. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah, if anyone just to read it, has any questions, please feel free to put it on the chat. And um, yeah, that was really nice. Like, I feel like this, I feel very inspired by every, what all of you guys said. It's great to have such different perspectives as well. Um, I love what you said just now, you on about the Renaissance. So I feel like that's really coming, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, great, Chris, as well. Like, just for like the clarity that you have with what you do is really nice. And um, just, yeah, I love how you can use it and how that affects all of us as humans. It's really, I think it's really special. And yeah, Alex, um, also really great that you're sharing this ways to get more creative with everyone. So, yeah, I think, well, say any more really and I'll let you take away the exercise Alex. Oh thank you everyone all right so let's just like shake it out a bit because you know we've been sitting for a while so feel free to just move around and grab a pen and paper if you don't have one nearby um i think that there is a lot of merit in writing things down rather than typing getting back to basics a bit. So just a moment to grab that. Oh, 
All right. Wow, it's 10 p.m. here, but I feel so awake. <laughs> okay. So while everyone's getting pen and paper, um, I'll just recap a little bit on why I do what I do. So, yeah, I think that when I feel connected to my creativity, then everything is easier. I find it easier to connect with other people. I find it easier to go about life, do my jobs, create content for social media for brands, go on photo shoots, create amazing things to give back to the world. So just from like such a small point of view, like tiny point of view of mine in the world, I'm like, right, okay, if that is what happens to me when I feel creative, imagine what good can be done in the world if more and more people feel connected to their inherent creativity. So that's what we're here to do today for the next 15 minutes or so. So I'll be guiding you through some super simple, accessible exercises that you can absolutely use time and time again. Anytime that you're feeling a little blocked, anytime that perhaps you want to move from one job to the next, say, in your day, and you just need that break and that sort of circuit breaker that can help you and like, yeah, just a refresher, you know? So we're going to take a moment to come into the space around you. And Jess did that really beautifully before through a meditation, but I'm going to invite you to do this a slightly different way. So just take a moment to focus your eyes on one point in front of you, preferably not at the screen, but at something physical in front of you. And just allow your shoulders to fall naturally. Maybe bring a softness to the jaw. And we'll just take a nice deep breath in together. And release it. One more like that, a nice deep breath in. And exhale to release. Now start to notice the color that you're looking at right now. And maybe the different gradients of color, the texture of what you're looking at. And start to broaden your gaze now. So what can you see around you? And scanning the room quite slowly. Noticing the way that light falls on different areas. The subtle details that are all around. And then noticing what you can hear, both inside your room and maybe any noises that are coming from outside. Then coming back to your pen and paper and just writing whatever is in your mind for the next two minutes or so. So stream of consciousness writing, perhaps on what you saw, what you noticed, or maybe if you have a busy mind right now, anything that's in there, get it all out on paper. I'll leave you in silence for the next minute or so. And if you get stuck, then just write that you're stuck and keep writing that you're stuck until you're unstuck.
Just about 30 seconds to go. and finishing up your sentence or any words that you're writing. And just those thoughts are done now. So feel free to maybe turn your page over, you can put a big cross through them, whatever you like, they're done. It's all down on paper, we're moving on now. So the theme for this class is aliveness. So what makes you feel alive? When do you feel alive? So I'd just like you to write down for the next minute or so, what pops into your head when you think of the word alive? And I'm just going to leave you with that. So when do you feel alive? And when you feel alive, where do you feel this in your body? About 20 seconds left. Amazing, and just finishing up your word or your sentence. And really this feeling of aliveness is where our creativity is born from. So that feeling of connection and, you know, it's, it's presence, you're here. And as Nathan said so wonderfully before, every moment is a moment of creation. So when you're alive, you're inherently creating. So what are you creating in this moment? So now it's time to craft a story. So maybe choose two or three words that you wrote down when you wrote on the word aliveness. So I wrote down rich, ecstatic and love. So creating a story now, weaving together your three chosen words, and let it be on anything at all. So just as long as you weave those three words or phrases in, then you're doing this exercise perfectly. So create a narrative or maybe recall a certain memory in your mind, but just write it down, get it all down on paper. And we're going to do this exercise for about four minutes. And that will be our final exercise. So creating a story, on your aliveness, starting now. This is a chance for you to really connect back with your playfulness as well, your storytelling techniques.
about a minute and a half to go. Maybe describing any feelings. What you can see in your story, what you can hear. Finishing up your sentence, please. And of course, you're welcome to come back to this story if you're on a bit of a roll. So just to finish this session and this time with our aliveness that we've hopefully reignited, um, I'd like you to take a moment just to write down how you are going to commit to your aliveness this week. So what are you doing this week to make you feel alive? Just one thing, write it down, make that pledge to yourself. For me, I am going to spend some time in nature. That is my Pledge to myself. <laughs> Amazing. And feel free to share yours in the comments if you like as well. You can kind of hold each other accountable here. <laughs> Yeah, thank you guys so much. So this is just a bit of a taster of what I do. And I sometimes do these live on Instagram um, and on Facebook because it's just kind of fun way to do it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys feel a little bit more connected, maybe trying little techniques, which is super easy, um, but quite useful, I find. All right, so we've got some time in nature as well. Journaling, free writing, love that. Yeah, dance every day, yes. Love that, best way to start the day. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Alex, that was amazing, I love that. No problem. Yeah, it was so nice, I feel so calm now. <laughs> yeah. Go for an early swim, I like that as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alex. Um, wow, what an amazing Sunday. <laughs> I feel so inspired right now. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining as well. Um, I've posted everyone's Instagram handle here, all the uh, panelists as well. So if you do want to follow, they're just up in the chat here. And yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Joanna, um, Chris, Jay as well, <laughs> um, and Nathan, and Alex. Yeah, it's really, really amazing. Thank you for sharing your creativity with all of us as well. Um, yeah, so this creative thing, we're going to continue the series, and throughout the year, we have we'll probably have more interactive. Uh, events as well and yeah I think this thing 
is something that's so, so important. Like you want to say it's the Renaissance, you know, and also like Chris said, it's, it's the only way that we can move forward is by using our imagination, you know, it is the only way. So um, thank you all for showing up and taking part in the exercise as well and using, you know, your creative abilities because I feel like we're all going to need it. <laughs> Um, especially now, because it's everything is in so much change, and I really feel like we are the ones who are going to be creating what's coming next. So, yeah, thank you all so much. Um, does anyone else uh, want to add anything from the panel, or Jamie? No, just thanks so much um, for everybody for their um, amazing insights. I recorded this session as well, so um, if anybody wants me to send it to them, um, I can do later on today or probably Monday. But yeah, it's, been, it's like probably Monday because I'll probably go off the computer for a while. But yeah, that was really great. Alex absolutely loved the exercise and it like reignited like kind of like my love of like free writing, which I actually haven't done for like years and, and years and years. And I want to really like embed that back into my day to day. So thank you for bringing that um, to me. I've absolutely loved everybody's insights. As I said before, I think the, the interplay um, between everything that you guys have said today has been super interesting. Um, and yeah, and we'll be back in a few weeks with more stuff, more thoughts, more ideas, more things to think about. So yeah, hopefully you'll join us again soon. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks so much for Thank you all. Us. Really great to meet those you haven't met before. Great to see you all. Ciao, guys. Bye, 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 bye. Bye.